Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, February 25th, 2025. Uh, local time here is 949 in the evening. Uh, latest earthquake activity shows a 3.7 earthquake here across the San Andreas Fault outside of uh, Tres Pinos, California. That is off the uh, creeping section there of the San Andreas Fault. A number of earthquakes out here in the last week or so. Got a, actually a, a pretty decent swarm number. Uh, roughly within this area here of the San Andreas Fault, about 36 earthquakes in total here in the last week of various magnitudes. I believe that 3.6 is uh, the second largest in this little earthquake sequence out there. Uh, back on the uh, 22nd here, a couple days ago, a 3.9 struck in that same region. So uh, still got some movement going on here across the San Andreas Fault, the latest quake here uh, in California. Now it looks like that earthquake uh, is showing up on the uh, China Lake Station that sits down here across Southern California near Ridgecrest. That's uh, not too far of a distance away. Of course, a three-pointer uh, and stuff above that will obviously show up. Uh, let's see here what we got here for the magnitudes. Still underneath an automatic status, so this has not been reviewed by a seismologist. Uh, the magnitudes out here show a uh, it looks like they went with this station here reporting a 0 0.202 this one shows a little bit less of an error rate at 3.45 um, here's the magnitudes off over here that the reporting stations are picking up 4.4 on that that's interesting uh, so we'll wait and see what uh, a professional seismologist there at the USGS um, picks out far as a final magnitude goes, but right now a 3.6 there coming in off the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, also some movement up here off the Northern California region with a 2.9. That was just uh, almost an hour ago. So a little bit of movement on some broad scale uh, type of fashion out here against California and the West Coast. The San Andreas Fault here in the last um, 24 hours. And, of course, it seems to pick up at night here. Just as I'm getting ready to do my update, things start to come in. Uh, earlier today, some swarming going on here across the Brawley Seismic Zone. A, uh, about 13 earthquakes or so. Nothing big, but it's been a little while since we've seen any uh, earthquake activity down in that region. Also a little bit off here in the Joshua Tree National Park area, just off the plate boundary. A little separate swarming going on as well. So, uh, overall conditions... In the last couple of weeks, elevated here across California. Uh, of course, a big one can happen at any given time, folks. Don't be complacent. Trimmer map. Let's go ahead and check out the Cascadia Trimmer. They're across the southern end of the Cascadia. has been quite amplified here recently. Still got about 20 epicenters here across that area. Yesterday, let me see if they... Yeah, yesterday still shows nothing. Occasionally... Um, they'll go through a little phase here of not showing anything, but uh, yeah, no, nothing got added back on the list there. So only a handful of trimmers down there across the southern end. Could be why we're seeing a little bit of activity stirring up here across northern California uh, in the last 24 hours. Minor earthquake activity up around Seattle. We'll keep an eye there on the west coast. As we look inland, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there across that super volcano. But let's just double check, see how uh, things are going up there in Yellowstone. See if they got the data up there right. Uh, and it looks like it's still behind. Uh, the, if you look at the date here, it's going to be the 25th UTC time at 1730. That's when the last information came, on, came in. We're way beyond that. We're into the next day at 226.0550 UTC time. So this is behind like... 12 hours or so. Uh, I don't know why it's like that, why there's a, a delay, um, but uh, hopefully they fix it. So can't really say for uh, much earthquake activity going on out there. It's not showing there on any of the data. Uh, active out here across Oklahoma, Texas, and uh, Georgia. Or earthquake country down in Georgia? I don't know about that. That's uh, a little odd to see two earthquakes there back to back within 24 hours of each other. We just don't really see that much earthquake activity out here. In fact, if you look at the last 30 days of all magnitudes within this area, not a whole lot. Uh, some further up north around the Blue Ridge Mountains and the 
uh, Tennessee area, and of course the new Madrid Seismic Zone, but uh, getting a little bit of further pressurization out here against the East Coast and uh, various other fault systems. So just uh, be on guard, probably putting a little strain out here on the new Madrid Seismic Zone. Uh, the rest of the country out here, let's see what we got. Some larger activity earlier today around the uh, uh, Indonesia Islands area, the Maluka Sea. 6.1 coming into that area. Looks like a handful of aftershocks there as well following that large event. Uh, since then, any larger activity, let's take a look. Uh, yeah, really nothing's chopped top the chart here uh, since that earthquake. Decent sized earthquake nonetheless, six pointer. Uh, let's go ahead and give a quick glance here at the Santorini area of Greece. Uh, the seismograph station here, the recorded view is still off line from the 12th here so I don't know why that is uh, like that oh man where's my page at hold on a second here <clears throat> I gotta remember that to uh, update that link here there's the earthquake activity here in the last two days or so it looks like earthquakes of the last two days in greece various magnitudes obviously still hitting the santorini area of greece the numbers obviously are going down but uh let's go ahead and zoom in here and check one of these recorded views uh, hard to tell on that one looks a little choppy or offline Yeah, so I mean, we still got still got activity stirring up out there, but it uh, looks like the numbers are going down on this map here from the uh, Raspberry Shake data. 605 earthquakes here in the last week. The latest magnitude appears to be a 1.3 there in the mix. Just like we've seen here in the last few days, some spread out earthquake activity there around the Santorini Colombo region. Uh, no signs of anything big yet. You know, obviously we've had 13, 14,000 earthquakes out here in the last few weeks with no end result. But we're still continuing there with the earthquake activity. All right, take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. Man, there's a, wow, I'd say there's a lot more than just a couple aftershocks in that area of the six-pointer today. We got a, a huge swarm of aftershocks here. That could be... Uh, I mean, it's not uncommon to see that many aftershocks from a six-pointer. But that seems a little excessive, though. That's a lot of earthquake activity there being reported. Um, so keep an eye on that. They may be looking at something uh, maybe bigger happening in that region with that uptick going on. Uh, down south here across New Zealand, another 3.3. Deeper earthquake activity there across the uh, Tonga Trench. <coughs> Alaska. No, Alaska's Alaska up there. Some threes and uh, 4.2 out there earlier along the Aleutian Trench. Hawaii has returned back to an eruption stage. I got the notification there from the USGS here. Let's go ahead and check it out, see what we got on the webcams at Kilauea Volcano. There it is. Look at that beautiful fountaining kicking up. This is a, an image just taken about eight minutes ago. That's local time there in Hawaii. Fairly uh, active fountaining going on there. Episode number 11, I believe, is the uh, number right now. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful and stunning. Uh, I wish I could be out there. That would be nice. Uh, but here's the update, um, which was put out. This was put out this morning, so they haven't even done an update yet for the uh, volcano site. But I did get a notification system in my email uh, but they mentioned this morning a new eruptive episode is most likely to begin in the next three days. But that got cut uh, short, huh? Happened today. So let's check out the deformation data here. I'll show you guys real quick what's happening out there. There's our eruption. It goes down quick in terms of inflation. But if you look here in the last week, uh, we've been going up here a few days. So and that's been the general trend out here in the past month. Rinse and repeat cycle. That uh, is, I don't see any signs of it slowing down. So more than likely, uh, by tomorrow morning, that eruption could be on a pause again. 
Uh, they don't last very long. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's just a massive amount of earthquake activity there across Indonesia. Goodness. All right, space weather activity. Uh, a number of coronal holes out here. As you can see there on the UV filter array as well, but more noticeable on this one. And this one right here, the latest imagery. Uh, fairly decent coronal hole facing the Earth. Now that should amplify the conditions here for the auroras here in about... Uh, 72 hours or so, uh, give or take some time, depending on how fast that solar wind stream is flowing in. So that should uh, maybe adjust the uh, aurora potentials here in the coming nights. Proton events are still kicking up. Uh, these guys have a 25% chance for X flare. That's just what they have, 65% chance for M flare. Uh, and of course, the, the proton events just continuing there. Still getting uh, quite some active uh, active protons there slamming into the planet. A uh, quick glance here at the magnetogram image of the sunspots that are currently facing us. About the only area of interest is going to be down here across this region on the southwestern limb of the sun. But uh, really not too concerned about it because here in a day or so, that's going to be out of sight, out of mind. And we're left with, well, not a whole lot. Have to watch this area up here. Maybe, maybe it uh, stir up some uh, growth there, some complexity in the coming days. Severe weather outlook, fairly minimal. Not a whole lot there in the forecast as we uh, look at the models. I'll show you guys the Climate Prediction Center. Got uh, some wet weather coming out here for the West Coast. And hey, you guys know me. I'm a big fan of the, the weather and the rain. If it rained 24-7, you know, like if I lived up in Seattle, I, I don't think I'd like it. That's too much rain. But when it's supposed to rain here in Northern California, like from November to March, that's great. And uh, so, you know, March can still be a quite quite a wet month out here. So the 6 to 10 day outlook there shows uh, quite a bit of moisture across the country. And that includes Southern California as well. The 8 to 14 day outlook for precipitation there on the right, well above normal for the West Coast. That includes, yes, my neck of the woods. Three to four weeks out, still show some wet conditions out there. Uh, so let's take a look here at the numerical models, put them into motion. And see what uh, these forecast models are painting the picture for, or painting a picture of. Yeah, it looks like West Coast here getting uh, quite a bit of uh, storminess, so to speak. So watch that. Uh, I think we got some type of severe weather event coming up here as we enter into March. Right about, maybe right there on the 5th of March fifth or six it looks quite active down there and then maybe a repeat a couple days later we're just getting into that pattern here springtime pattern where uh, we start getting some warmer air coming up from the south intermixing with the colder drier air and the, therefore you get the severe weather out there so it looks to be uh ramping up here as we head into march just got to be prepared for that uh, there's an earthquake there in japan Showing up on that seismograph station. Uh, let's see, 5.7. Ooh, look where that's at, too. That could be a foreshock. Uh, very well could be a foreshock there to a uh, a much big mega quake across the Nankai Trough. That's exactly on the Nankai Trough right there directly. That's not good. Let me check out the uh, USGS map here. These guys not showing anything, but it's roughly right about here. You can see that on the EMSC model. Back over here. Right on it, folks. That's not good. So, of course, this segment right over there is five different segments. Or is there six? I think there's five. Um, in 1944, four of them over here on this side ruptured. They're waiting on this area over here. But it's possible this area can rupture uh, along with some other segments. So, And that's a mega quake, potential quake. Um, that can happen there across the Nankai Trough. It's very interesting. Uh, so 5.6 looks like a little bit of a downgrade, but it could get revised as well. USGS uh, not reporting anything yet, but that's, uh, watch that area pretty closely. Right on that segment right there That's that hasn't ruptured since 1856, I believe. Uh, Nankai Trough, I've covered this quite a bit here in 
This is a region that the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency put out a mega quake warning for back last year when there was a swarm of activity south. So now we got some movement directly on it. Things on the move out here, folks. Uh, California, real quick glance here. 3.6 holding steady there across the uh, Tres Pinos area. Has been reviewed by a seismologist. It is uh, just off the San Andreas Fault. The creep, Well, right on it looks like near the creeping segment. So just be on guard, folks. Things are rocking and rolling, getting in, moving, uh, getting things moving out here. And uh, anytime we could see uh, some large earthquake activity uh, anywhere, you know, it's been hundreds of years for the San Andreas Fault down here. Uh, coming up on the regular intervals for the central segment as well. Uh, 18, I was 18... 12, I think uh, we'll have to cover that another night, but uh, yeah, a lot of time has passed since we've had any big earthquake activity out here. The Ridgecrest events, those were uh, 2019, <coughs> July 4th, July 5th, but that has, you know, that's ways away from the plate boundary. That's just been building up for quite a while, but here is where we, we expect the 8.1 to take place. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. Stay safe out there. Be prepared. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning. Unless something major happens, it's a pretty active evening. Have a good one.